<laughs> live from Phoenix. We are live from Phoenix at Creativation. It is the annual trade show for AFCI. I am at the Paper Artsy booth with some lovely people videoing me. Hey guys, <laughs> Hi. thanks for joining us. I want to just take you through some techniques for creating some beautiful backgrounds and building layers. What I've already done before you came is I just made one uh, piece already on paper. It's just on watercolor paper. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use it as an accent over a new background that I'll make now. So when I make backgrounds, the first thing I think about is contrast. I don't worry as much about the colors. So I would say this is light. So I'm gonna work with a background that's dark. So I'm gonna go ahead to these beautiful array of paints and I'm gonna pick a dark color. And I'm gonna go with Peacoat. I love that, it's opaque. It's a really, a really rich blue. And I'm just gonna start by squeezing some directly onto this. This is just a chipboard piece. I'm gonna squeeze in a couple places. And I'm gonna add one other shade in here. I'm gonna add some Venice blue. That's one of my new colors that just came out today, I think. Yesterday. Yesterday, okay. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of that. And I'm not worried about the color mix. It doesn't need to be mixed well. It doesn't need to be mixed perfectly. I'm just gonna mix them as I brush them out. I'm gonna get a brush, but I paint dry. So I'm gonna wipe it down. So I'm just gonna brush this out. And you'll see the colors intermingle kind of randomly. I like adding two colors at once because you do get um, some coloration shifts really without trying. Looks like you just made double denim. <laughs> oh my god, I made my other new color. <laughs> it wasn't so tricky to create then. <laughs> no. A little darker, darker double denim. <laughs> See how easy double it denim. is to make paints? You can too at home. All right, one of the things I like to do, um, and I'm going to build my piece next with is mono printing. Mono printing is just a fun technique, but what mono printing also allows you to do is it allows you to dry your layers in between. So this beautiful thing, I'm going to kiss the surface below and bring some of that mixed color in so that when I add the first layer to the second layer, I've intermingled them and so it actually will make the two layers go well together. Mm, nice. It's a really nice subtle yep. shift, but I think it's kind of dramatic. And then you notice it's only in the middle, so I'm yep. going to take a little bit around the edges before this dries. Yeah, okay. And then I'm going to take another sheet of paper and just dry it up. And then I'm going to go with this other sheet of paper and I'm going to do a formal a monoprint method. I'm going to choose first just a lighter blue and that lighter blue is going to be a uh, mermaid, one of my favorites. And I'm going to brush mermaid out on this other sheet of paper. You don't need too much. I'm going to get a new brush, dry it up, and just spread it out on here pretty loosely. And then I'm going to mono print on this piece. I'm just going to lay it down and rub it out like that. Get rid of the excess hairs, hairs from the brush. That's what happens when you use my favorite cheap kind of brushes. Yeah, but it gives it like linen texture, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, it's yes. very nice. Definitely. And I'm going to do that one more time. I'm just going to add a little bit. And at the same time, I want you to notice the sheet I'm using. Ultimately, this ends up sometimes being better than the art you're making. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go ahead and just add a little bit more. And then I'm going to continue doing this with maybe two other colors to give a little bit of contrast. Um, I can't stay in the blue family. That's going to be just two one note. So I think I'm going to go in with a little bit of butter. Butter is one of my new paints as well. I don't want to highlight it so it's, it ends up being buttered yellow, but I do want to add some of this sort of crisp color to the piece. So I'm going to just wipe off my brush so the colors don't mix too much. Spread it out. And then just go ahead and do that method. Yeah, I like that. The more you do with this, 
the more depth you get, the more dimension you get. Seriously, when I'm home and I'm not sort of demoing live, I could spend a half hour, <laughs> no exaggeration, just layering and monoprinting, monoprinting and layering. Look, there's a little bus coming around the corner. Oh, yeah. I like it has a little, should have a little bell. Yeah. This is like awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> It's a show bus, so you don't have to walk the show. You can just hop on the bus and get a ride. Hop on, hop <laughs> off. They didn't stop at our bus stop. <laughs> I guess no one wanted to get off here. They didn't want to be on camera. All right, so I'm going to do one more color. I'm going to do some sort of bright, vivid. Um, anyone in the audience want to pick a bright, vivid color? Oh, OK, color? guys, interactive, live. Anybody want to? Pick a, uh, pick, color a color, family. pick a color family. Somebody help me, otherwise you're going to be watching me. Show doing the nothing. colors. Show the colors. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. We're waiting. Is anybody watching? Yeah. Maybe no one's watching. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not seeing any comments come through. Oh, here we go. Pink. Wanda said pink. Pink. Rufus coral. said coral. Karen has said Spanish mulberry. Ooh, Spanish Linda mulberry said wins. Spanish mulberry. All right, Spanish yeah. mulberry. Okay. Helen yeah. said blue. So we're gonna go do this. Tracy said orange. Julie said lime. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> this is what I love about art. Everybody has their own way of doing things. Kay Carly said pink. Of course right. you did, Kay. <laughs> Hi, Julie. Hey, everybody out there. Oh, I like that. Hot yeah, pink. very nice. This one's hot pink. I like that. Ooh. Did we do okay, okay. guys? Yeah. yeah, so cool. I'm going to take advantage of the uh, paint on my brush. I like to use everything. And I'm going to kind of just go around the edge and I'm going to feather it in a little bit. Mm -hmm. So that it just almost gives a border, but it's, it's such a soft color. It's a very subtle border. And I'm going to blot a little bit. All right, Very nice. Yeah. So the last thing I'm going to do is take a risk and perhaps shift it completely. Ay, ay, ay. I am going to take some translucent paints. I do like your, I do like that one. This is gorgeous, right? Yeah. Yeah. So probably what I would do is eventually put this aside and then work in as a full yeah. background. But I'm going to try to do something with this. So I'm going to take a couple of colors of translucence. Yep. Maybe some of the other ones that people suggested, yeah. like even a lime -ish. Lime or... Yeah. Hey, so pesto or what no? about Tracy oh. Scott's new lime color, which Ooh. nobody knows about yet, so that's a secret. This is a secret. You guys Ooh. are on the scoop. <laughs> yeah, on the scoop. <laughs> this yeah. lime is called slime, and it's translucent. <laughs> so the way I like to use translucent paints, translucent paints are great. A lot of my lower layers are opaque. They have full coverage. And then I shift to the translucent paints, because what ends up happening is you can then shift the color, add depth and dimension, but you don't lose any of the dynamic uh, markings that you've made. Mm -hmm. So what, the way I like to do it, people do it all differently, is I'm just going to take it, I'm gonna squeeze and I'm gonna put just a little bit. It's not that translucent. <laughs> it's not? <laughs> we're gonna... Look, the look on his face. <laughs> look. It's not that translucent. It's it a, will it's, cover the whole thing. It's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Look, this is what you handed me. <laughs> This is what you handed me. You wanted to give those people a scoop? Yeah. They're getting the scoop. <laughs> so what I do quickly is I spritz it with water, which will help any paint become a little bit more... Translucent. Translucent. Just in case. <laughs> and then I'm going to take a paper towel, and I'm going to rub the paint in. Yeah, Ooh, still nice. translucent. <laughs> and I'm going to get some color shift and depth as a result of that. And if I want to keep it a little bit more opaque, then when I rub it in, I, I'm going to rub it out eventually, but I can just rub it in like that and leave it and let it dry. But I'm going for the, yep. the opacity, uh, the translucency here. Mm -hmm. All right, you get kind of a subtle shift there. Beautiful. Um, what I'd like to do is do one more translucent, but I need a bright. What about your terracotta or something? Or... How about my smoked oh, paprika? Smoke, yeah, yeah. Okay. The thing about mixed media and adding layers is you never know where you're going to go. Those of you who know me know I have a catchphrase. And my catchphrase is you're only one layer away from magic. Sometimes when you're creating and working, all of a sudden you add one thing and it's brilliant. 
But I also, I'm honest, so I also say you're only one layer away from crap. Because <laughs> even if you add some beautiful paint, sometimes you make the choice. So let's see what happens. Let's, let's see what happens. Okay. I don't know what we're thinking out there. I don't hear any clapping. <laughs> Oh, yeah, they show, no, they're showing okay. you some love, don't worry. Thank you. Okay, so, you know, we've color shifted it a bit, and we've given it some more depth. So you can see it like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so, Hearts are coming. last but yeah. not least, before I add that, I've shifted the color quite a lot. Yeah. I think I've shifted the color in a way that maybe it doesn't quite go as well. Yeah. So this is all about what mixed media is. So I am going to go back to one of my original colors, which is um, Peacoat, oh. which is Peacoat. Technical <laughs> difficulties, stand by. <laughs> Technical difficulties, stand by. Technical difficulties, stand by. And I am going to do a little bit of grayering. And I'm going to add this layer to the top. And I'm going to have some of the colors uh, that I have there come up from underneath. And I think that's going to integrate it better with the piece that I want to add. Yep. Okay. I think I like that better. Yeah. Very nice. And I think that's going to shift and, and work just so much Yep. so much better perfect um but the last thing i'm going to do before i cut that to put on there is i'm going to do a little bit of splattering i want the background to be a little bit more dynamic um and a little and i do want it to be a little bit brighter so i'm going to splatter with two colors and the way i splatter i'm going to take for example this butter i'm going to put very little and then i'm going to water it down so it, it's almost pourable and then i'm going to take the back of a small paintbrush if i can find one got it Ooh, that perfect, perfect. And I'm gonna stir it up so I get the pigment mixed. And then if I might do it with a toothbrush, but I used my toothbrush in my mouth this morning. So I'm <laughs> going to use a small paintbrush and I'm gonna add some some splatter. Great. And I felt it was a little too dark. This is going to add some lightness mm -hmm. and some brightness. I don't want that big splats. I just want the small splats. So I'm, it's very forgiving. And then I'm going to do it with one other color. Um, and I'm going to do that with a um, glacier ice, which is also one of my new colors. I think that would be mm, quite nice. nice. So I'm going to put it in here again, just a little bit. Is that on camera? Yep. Is that a little bit? You really don't need much. Stir it up. And then soak it in. Yeah. I like that. Sort of almost constellation like. Mm -hmm. All this excess liquid here. Like, let's not waste it. So, um, I got some random background here. Let's just use it. And we'll see if we can get the trip down. And in this, in doing so, we'll start a background. Yeah, there we go. We can just put this aside to dry, and we can just then build over it. Am I blocking the view? a little bit. All right, and then that'll be waiting for me. So what I would do next, and then, hey, and then I'm afraid I'm going to have to move on, yes. is I'm going to cut this down to size. Yep. Um, so I am going to not use a ruler because I don't have one. I'm going to use the side of this, and I'm going to do it kind of without even looking. I'm just going to go ahead and 
scare it and make it smaller. You can see I think all everything I make is precious because I take such good care of it. Yeah. <laughs> It's pretty good, right? Butter. Everybody needs some butter. This is an opaque yellow with a really crisp edge to it. Magic Moss, I love that name. Happy I came up with it. Um, it's almost as good as all the other paper artsy names that they come up with. And this is like grass, it's like freshly cut grass. And Double Denim, we spent literally hours in England this past year matching our jeans to paint until we came up with the ideal denim. The four uh, colors are either all, actually this set, they're all opaque. You can do amazing things with this with stamping and stencils. So that's the summer set. I want to move over to the winter set. I love this. I find this set really elegant. Leandra thinks it's girly, but I, I kind of think it's elegant. There's yeah. glacier ice, it's very nice. which is just this icy, icy blue, really light. Um, works really well with the purples. Spanish mulberry, which actually I would love to take credit for, but it was a former color that was retired at Paper Artsy. It is now being brought back. That's the girly one, I guess. I'm embracing my pink. Uh, Venice blue, I absolutely love that. It's sort of a blue purple tone, and then steel grays, which I thought I kind of I really love, but I almost think of it as um, sort of a new neutral, yeah, a little bit different. It's a really nice gray. It's beautiful gray, and they're all either opaque or semi-opaque. So these paints really work well with stenciling, with journaling, journaling with backgrounds. Um, I'm excited about them, and I'm also excited about how they blend together and how they work with my my eight earlier sets. So we're gonna. Walk around. around the front. It's a little crazy here because there's carpeting all over the place, yeah. rolled dotty boots. So I just want to show you a little my colorations. These are my my uh, 16 colors. And yeah, this isn't gonna work, guys. But <laughs> you guys can do that. I just love the color uh, color palette that's been created here. And um, there's gonna be more, but we don't need to talk about that now because these are new. Just we have my stamp sets here. Again, beautiful etched rubber. I don't know if you can see with the packaging just how deep and detailed that is. It's really quite extraordinary. So much detail. We'll be showing you this much more all in the next three days. There's some artwork here that Glenda Miles did which shows off in the background a lot of my stamps. She rocked it for me. And then some uh, bright artwork that shows some of the colorations of my new line. Yeah, from the Again summer, we're going right? to show you this in much more detail in the next three days. You can see here also the package, the package colors. So we're gonna we're gonna cut this because I know if this video is too long, no one's gonna be watching. So again, I'll remind you, Creativation Phoenix from AFCI Paper Artsy Boom, my new releases. You can go to, on my site, uh, the alterpage.blogspot.com. You can go on Paper Artsy site, and you can find. Um, all the information about the new releases. The, the amazing thing about Paper Artsy is that these are in shops now. You can find them online in some brick and mortar shops. You can buy them off my website. Um, and we're going to show you how to use them all weekend long. Thank you so much for coming here. Thank you Paper Artsy for hooking me up. <laughs> we will see you all weekend long. Take Thanks, care guys. guys.